Hey guys, this is Rocketman from 16th AGR. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the basics of the air defense units available in DCS. Of course you'll need the combined arms module to play with these units, but thankfully it's pretty cheap and you can get a lot of value from it. There are other units in combined arms you can control like tanks, artillery, and JTAC, but today I'm only going to be discussing the basics of operating the various air defense units. First let's look at the interface you get when you take control of the system. Different vehicle types will give you different information, but right now we're only going to talk about the basic interface you get in each vehicle. In the bottom right of the screen, you have the vehicle info block. This provides information on the vehicle's direction, speed, drive gear, and ammunition currently selected. In the lower left is the group information block. This displays the battery's current formation and rules of engagement. This is for when you are part of a larger air defense battery. The turret and hull orientation display in the top right corner shows the orientation of the turret in relation to the hull and the orientation of both in relation to compass heading. Below the turret and hull orientation display is the unit's current health. So that's the basic interface that you're going to see across all the systems. Some of the specific systems have other interfaces, but we'll get to those later. Now let's get to driving. So all vehicles in DCAs operate the same in terms of driving. Each vehicle is equipped with a transmission that has three gears, forward, neutral, and reverse. The vehicle must be in the proper gear in order to move. Once it's in gear, you can control the vehicle with either the keyboard or the controller, just like any racing game. Each vehicle is also equipped with a brake and a handbrake. The vehicles do tend to get a little unstable at high speed, so be sure to only make minor adjustments. And that's it, really. So let's move on to the various air defense systems. Now that we know how to move around the map, let's start looking at the types of air defense units and how they operate. First, we will look at the most numerous and capable air defense units, the URF Guided SAMs. RF guided SAMs make use of radar energy to track and engage targets, the same way that aircraft radars track targets for engagement. In DCS, there are multiple RF SAMs, but only a few of them can actually be manned. The system we're going to be looking at today is the SA-15, or the TOR. It's a good example of how RF SAMs work in DCS. The first thing you'll notice about the system is that it has an additional display in the top left corner. This interface consists mainly of the circular radar scope, which provides radar information. The outer ring displays a compass heading, and the green triangle at the top of the circle displays the orientation of the hull. The green line indicates the orientation of the turret. Three green inner rings divide the scope's range into different levels. Above and to the left of the radar scope is the current display range of the radar scope. This can be adjusted to see more or less of the airspace. In addition, you'll see a compass readout at the top of the screen, which indicates the direction you're currently looking, and there's also a reticle in the middle of the screen, and that's what you use to aim at the aircraft. When the radar is active, objects detected by the radar are displayed within the radar scope. The radar is centered at the middle of the radar scope, and aircraft tracks are displayed radially around it. Targets are displayed relative from their heading to the radar, and the distance from the center represents the distance from the radar. Solid rectangles are classified as hostile aircraft, while striated rectangles are classified as friendly aircraft. Missiles are always shown as dots, regardless of hostility. Once a target has been detected, the operator will be required to slew the turret to the target's azimuth and scan for the target visually using the system's optics. Once the target has been detected, place the reticle over it. Once you press the lock on button, the system will begin locking onto the target with the radar if it is within range. This process requires several seconds and varies from system to system. During this process, a yellow square is placed around the target and range information is provided to the gunner. Once the target has been locked on, the square will change color to red and complete target information will be provided. The system automatically calculates when the target is within range, however the operator is not restricted from engaging targets that are out of range. When the target is locked, you can fire up two missiles simultaneously at the target using the assigned fire button. The missile flyout can be monitored in the radar scope. No input is required during flyout other than to keep the turret pointed at the target. You can cancel the target track if the missile becomes decoyed, which will detonate the missile. So that's the basics of how the RF guided SAMs work. While they are the most complex of the air defense units, they also have the longest range and are the most capable. Next we'll look at the infrared guided SAMs. For this, we'll be using the SA-13, or Strela 10M. This is one of the more capable IR SAMs in the game, but all IR SAMs operate in the same way. Engaging targets with IR SAMs is much simpler compared to RF systems. IR guided SAMs aren't equipped with radars, requiring you to acquire targets visually. 
The interface of the IR stands is much simpler. There's no radar scope and you're basically only given a reticle to line yourself up with the target. Some IR SAMs also have a thermal sight, which allows you to detect the heat signature of the target. Once the target has been visually acquired, the gunner will align the reticle on the target. If the target's IR signature is high enough, the missile seeker will automatically begin tracking the target. Some systems will show this acquisition with a small circle around the target when looking down the sights of the system. This process will take several seconds and requires the gunner to maintain the reticle over the target. During this process, the system will emit a low buzz to signify that the system is acquiring the target. Once the missiles have locked onto the target, the tone will change to a higher pitch. IR missiles are fire and forget, allowing you to launch all your missiles simultaneously. Manpads operate in the same way as vehicle-based IR systems, however there is no interface to assist the gunner. The easiest way to acquire targets with manpads is in the third person view. Place the reticle over the target and listen for the audio tones. Once the audio tone switches to the higher pitch, fire the missile at the target. If operating in first person mode, you'll have to acquire the target and then align the sights over the target. Again, listen to the audio tones to determine what state the missile is in. At the higher pitch, you'll be able to engage the target just as before. The last air defense unit in DCS that we'll look at are the self-propelled anti-air gun systems. These systems use multi-barrel gun systems to engage targets with bullets rather than missiles. The system we're going to look at today is the ZSU-23. Gun systems operate much in the same way as the RF guided SAMs. First you'll lock up the target with the onboard radar. This will present the same interfaces with the RF guided SAMs, but without the radar scope. Once the target has been locked up, the system will automatically compute an aim point for the guns. Next you'll align the reticle over the same point and fire the cannons. In this position, the bullets will fly ahead of the target, who will fly into the bullets. The last system we're going to look at today is a hybrid gun and missile system. This is the SA-19, or the Tunguska. This is the most difficult weapon system to use, and it's usually better left to the AI to control. But we're going to go over it just because it introduces new gameplay elements. The SA-19 is equipped with both guns and missiles. The guns operate exactly the same as previously described in the gun weapon system. The missiles, however, are command line of sight. This means you are physically steering the missile by pointing the reticle. To use the SA-19 missiles, you simply have to place the reticle over the target and press the fire button. Once you fire the missile, it will follow the reticle wherever you move it. While the radar is not required to conduct an engagement, it can be useful in the field. The smoke from the missile can sometimes obscure the target. By locking the target at first, you can monitor the target's location through the yellow box. This gives you an aiming point for the missile, regardless of visibility on the target. You must still steer the missile to the target manually. Because the missile doesn't require you to actually be locked onto a target, you can launch the missile at whatever you want, including ground targets. So that's the basics of operating the various air defense systems within DCS. As you can see, they're fairly easy and straightforward to use. Now you can go out and practice and get good at using the various systems in the field. But in order to become an expert in the system, you have to understand what it means to be an air defense gunner, not just how to use the air defense system. And that's what we'll talk about in future videos. So for now, this is Rocketman signing off. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out the other instructional videos on our YouTube channel, or check out our website at 16AGR.com, where you can sign up to be a member and enter our flight training school or the ground commander's course.